crazy to me. This is um, from a source in Japan, Ashari Shimbun, the news agency there. Vaccine blamed in the avian flu outbreak. The agricultural ministry suspects an unauthorized vaccine from Central America caused the avian flu outbreak in Abari Prefecture. The ministry said an unauthorized bird flu vaccine originating in Central America might have been brought into Japan. Instead of immunizing the birds, the vaccine infected them, the sources said. There's an example there that we've just seen where the vaccine actually infected them. Now, this is a picture of Dr. James A. Shannon, National Institutes of Director, National Institutes of Health Director from 1955 to 1968. He's receiving the Distinguished Federal Civilian Service Award from President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1966. Here's what he said. He said, the only safe vaccine is a vaccine that is never used. End of quote. So again, we've heard of a lot of top flight experts in the medical field saying pretty much the same thing. This is from CNN out of Washington. This is from 930 of 1998. This is entitled Nearly One Billion in Injury Claims Paid Out for the Vaccination Program. Nearly one billion has been paid out to more than 1,300 people injured over the past decade in a government-backed childhood vaccination program, the Justice Department reported. The individual awards to families of children injured by the vaccinations often amount to more than a million dollars each. That's because the injuries are so horrific. Many times death or permanently disabled type of stuff. Um, this is from the Associated Press, and, it, and it, this is from 11905. It's entitled CDC Centers for Disease Control Will Allow the 1918 Killer Flu Off Campus. Federal scientists say they will consider requests to ship the recently recreated 1918 Killer Flu virus to select U.S. research labs. There are 300 non-government research labs registered to work with the deadly germs like the Spanish flu. Last month, U.S. scientists announced they had created from scratch the 1918 virus. It was the first time an infectious agent behind a historic global epidemic had ever been reconstructed. Well, we know the 1918 virus actually killed at least 50 million people, so kind of scary stuff there. Now, back to the Bible. Psalm 112, verse 7 says, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So this is a verse that would be good to uh, memorize. Um, you know, Psalm 56, 3, What time I am afraid I will trust in thee, is another good verse. So we're not to be afraid of evil tidings. No matter what I'm saying today, it's not something we should be afraid of. Our heart should be fixed, trusting in the Lord. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. And that's what we're talking about today, the fear of man. So just make sure that you don't make the wrong decision just because of you're motivated out of fear of man or fear of some situation. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Psalm 66, verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So if you've got all kind of sin issues in your life, and you're going into the time, a time like this, then you're at a gigantic disadvantage. Because if you want to have God hear your prayer and, you, and you're and you participating in all kind of sinful things and activities, well, God's not going to hear you. This is why we should be seeking the Lord right now while he may be found. The Bible talks about the, the night cometh when no man can work. Okay, And uh, how long this information is going to be permitted to be even be put out, I don't know. But... We should be praying, fasting, seeking the Lord's face, getting as right with Him as we possibly can um, prior to these cataclysmic events. Don't let this day take you, you know, unawares. But it won't now, because if you're watching this, then you, you're going to really be without excuse. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. And um, this is why I'm putting this, part, part of the reason I'm putting this out. So this is from Washington and Reuters, and this is the new implantable biochip could provide quick bird flu test. U.S. researchers introduced the new implantable biochip that can test for 11 different influenza strains, including the avian flu, in less than a quarter of the time it now takes to diagnose flu in patients. Now, can you imagine, you know, the mark of the beast here? 
most likely is going, and I've done several teachings on this on my sermons audio site that I'll give that link at the end, but um, most likely it's going to be an implantable microchip in conjunction with some type of identifying mark on the outside of either the right hand or the forehead, so probably some type of tattoo. And this is um, an implantable biochip that they're going to be offering that can test for 11 different influenza strains in less than a quarter of the time. So this is going to be look very, very attractive to most people, ones that are not learned in the Bible. One developer said, quote, this new technology should help provide better global influenza surveillance. Why? Because they can track you with these types of chips. So in this next news story we're going to be looking at, this is very recent, 32408. This was entitled, ST Micro Launches Chip to Detect the Bird Flu. This is from Reuters. Europe's top semiconductor maker, STM Microelectronics, said it has developed a portable injectable microchip called the Veriflu to detect influenza viruses, in including the bird flu in humans. Now, this is the H5N1 bird flu, uh, well, as among all the other forms. This device, which functions as a mini laboratory on a chip, can screen and identify multiple classes of pathogens and genes in a single diagnostic test within two hours. So this, again, is going to look very attractive to most people. It's not just going to be able to, to detect avian flu or H5N1 bird flu, but it's saying here multiple classes of pathogens and genes in a single diagnostic test. So, again, they're going to make this appear very, very good, just like the mark of the beast is going to appear like a great thing. Going further, it says, unlike other tests available on the market that can detect only one strain at a time and requires days or weeks to obtain results. See, again, with H5N1, the thing about that particular virus is that it can kill you very quickly. You don't have a lot of time if you contract it. So, again, making this look all the more attractive. This chip can differentiate human strains of the influenza, A and B viruses, drug-resistant strains and mutated variants, including the avian flu or H5N1 strain. There's the link to the Reuters article. The next news brief we're looking at is entitled, Quick Diagnosis of the Flu Strains Possible with the New Microchip Test. Now, this is from 22806, and uh, scientists from the University of Colorado and Boulder and the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention the CDC, have developed an injectable microchip-based test that may allow more labs to diagnose influenza infections and learn more about the viruses causing illness. The, now, this one's called the flu chip. Successfully distinguishes among 72 influenza strains, including the H5N1 strain, in less than 12 hours. The research was led by University of Colorado scientists uh, and was funded by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, part of the National Health Institutes. I put that in there. It's a little bit redundant, but I wanted to have a lot of confirmation that these injectable microchips are here and it's a matter of time before implementation. Most likely they're not going to be mainstream until there's more of a higher level threat to make it look more attractive. There's an actual picture of an injectable microchip. Injectable microchip is 400 the size of the grain of salt. This is from the Telegraph, the source. Uh, 21503. Now this is 21503. Who knows what they've got now? A microscopic computer. I, I know. Uh, we'll, we'll see how small they get. A microscopic computer chip so tiny that 400 could fit on the grain of a salt. On a grain of salt will begin to revolutionize electronics soon. The memory device, due to be produced by the end of 2004, is the size of a human cell. Doesn't get much smaller than that making it the most compact electronic chip ever. Dr. Elibogen, a physicist at the MITRE Corporation, said that by stacking the chips on top of each other, creating injectable nanorobots, it should be possible to store a gigabyte of information on a device the size of a grain of salt. The Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, is funding the project. And again, this is pretty draconian stuff. 